I'm going to show you how to ride every ride at Disneyland's California Adventure in less than four hours. I'm expecting we're probably going to wait like 10 minutes for Goofy. But then I walk in line. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. He literally so just walked on. 20 second wait, that's not fake at all, that was real. You can click here to watch me actually complete the challenge, but this video is going to go over everything that I did in that video to pull this off. So without further ado, here is my edited down live stream of my Disney California Adventure speedrun analysis. Riding every Disney California Adventure ride in 5 hours, spoiler alert, it was 4 hours, it was not 5 hours, but I was expecting it to be 5 hours. This is California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort, and today I'm gonna attempt to ride every single ride at this park in less than five hours. Okay, so <laughs> we are back in the park, early entry, 7.30 a.m. There's no one ahead of me. As far as California Adventure, how early entry works, once again, early entry is you get into the park 30 minutes before everyone else because you stay at a hotel. This time we stayed at the Disneyland Hotel. Early entry at California Adventure is a little bit weird compared to early entry at Disneyland. At Disneyland, you get two lands. You, they, you get like half the park. California Adventure, you get the whole park that you can like fully explore, but only specific rides are open and because everything's so spread out it's just it's a little weird obviously the plan that we want to go with is do as many rides as possible in this 30 minutes that we have the best way to do it is to just knock out Avengers Campus. The reason for this is because they're the closest together, but also because their lightning lane return times can be pretty annoying later in the day. I also wanted to immediately after doing those two rides go to Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, and this was kind of a crazy move. Every single early entry guide that you will find online talking about how to do early entry at California Adventure, they'll tell you just do the two in Avengers Campus and then rope drop Radiator Springs Racers. And they, they say that that's like, if you're, if you're like really fast at it, if you think you can do it, then that's what you should do. We want to do three rides and then we want to rope drop. So we're, we're already kind of like, I, I was thinking, I don't even know if this is possible because no one's ever actually done it. So we're doing Guardians of the Galaxy, then Spider-Man, then Major Shankar Jamboree. What I found out is that for the first five rides, at least the first four rides, but I believe the first five rides that we did, there is no possible way, literally no possible way that we could have done them any faster. This was such a great early entry for us. Let's continue the video. All right, we're heading straight for Guardians of the Galaxy. We should be the very first people on this ride. We're doing Guardians of the Galaxy first because Guardians of the Galaxy is the more popular ride of the two Avengers Campus rides. It's the more popular one. And as we're about to find out, that was a really good move because I was considering doing Spider-Man first. Then I realized that, no, that's a stupid idea. Just do Guardians because everyone's going to be rushing to Guardians. So the thing about these two rides is that they both have pre-shows. This, this one and Spider-Man. So we're going to have to wait a little bit. So what I'm explaining there is that the fact that there are rotations for the pre-shows of the ride, you have to wait through like a uh, rocket explaining like what you got to do. Uh, when you go to the Spider-Man ride, like Tom Holland explains a little thing that you got to do. Because of that, and just because of the fact that these rides are a little bit longer. They're not like Fantasyland rides where you can just hop on them and get on the next one in like four minutes. It takes a little bit of time to get through these rides. And that's why we, we only plan on doing three rides during this instead of six rides when we were at Disneyland. We gotta do this and Spider-Man and Maters in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We were the very first rotation of the day. We were the very first group of people that were actually loaded on the ride that day. So that means even though it's 7.39 a.m., it took us like nine minutes to actually get on the ride, it doesn't really matter. There's no possible way we could have done this any faster, even though it is like, you know, nine minutes in. It's 7.30 in the morning and we're going on this. It's we gotta get Spider-Man like right now. So, so now I'm booking it to Spider-Man. It's 7.43 a.m. and I'm like, okay, we need to book it to Spider-Man because I know that in 17 minutes, rope drop is gonna happen and I want to do two rides in that amount of time. So that's why we're booking it to Spider-Man. If it takes us another 13 minutes to do Web Slingers, we should have like three minutes. So that's me doing the mental math of like, how long are we actually going to have to do Mater's Junkyard Jamboree? That was just the question that I was thinking. It really just depends on how fast we can get through Spider-Man. The rotation's going by so quickly because I think- so right there, we got super freaking lucky because we were the only people in the pre-show room, which is like unprecedented. That's never happened to me for like any ride that I've ever done at Disneyland. But because there was literally no one there, they were like, all right, we're just going to send these people through because what are they going to do? Wait for more people to show up? It's early entry. No one's there. We got through that rotation super fast and it meant that we 
got through Spider-Man super yeah, fast because because the, the way that Spider-Man loads on is you basically just walk on it. It's very much like a Omni Mover type ride. I kind of knew that the load on was not going to take that long, even though Guardians of the Galaxy, it took a little bit because it's a different type of ride. Let's see how long it took us to get through this ride. 14 minutes, 33 seconds to 24 minutes, 23 seconds. So that is like nine minutes and 50 seconds, less than 10 minutes to do Spider-Man. This is unprecedented. We got through Spider-Man so quickly. I don't think anyone's ever done this ride this quickly, but moving on, it, it gets it gets even crazier. We've got seven minutes. We need to do I wonder if skipping pre-shows somehow would be a valid strategy. It is for rides that you can skip pre-shows of, but for some rides you can't. For rides that have single rider, depending on the ride, you can skip the pre-show. It's 7.53. We have seven minutes to regular rope drop. We've just done two rides. Again, let me remind you, every single California Adventure early entry guide that you can find on the internet is going to tell you that you should do Guardians and then you should do Spider-Man. And then after that, you won't have any other time to do anything else and you should just rope drop Radiator Springs. But we have seven minutes to spare and I'm like, dude, this is enough time to do Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. We're going to get on Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. We're going to do three DCA rides during early entry. I was so excited because I was like, dude, no one else is crazy enough to even do this except me. So I was kind of realizing that I might be the first person to ever do this, like ever. No one, no one has ever done three <laughs> rides at DCA during early entry. I want to be the first one to do it. I'm going to be taking my time. I don't have the energy for this. We have. Like Meanwhile, Jeffrey was just walking. He literally told me, just get on Mater's if you, if, if I'm late, just get on Mater's. I don't care. <laughs> I had just missed the rotation. They were just starting the next rotation for Mater's. First of all, let me explain what a rotation is at Disneyland. Imagine that you show up to a bus stop. When you get there, you're going to have to wait for the bus to show up to actually get on the bus and do it. However, if you show up to the bus stop and the bus has just arrived, then you can just get on and you're not waiting at all for the bus to show up at all. It's the same idea, but with these rides at Disneyland. There's going to be rides such as Dumbo or Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. The way for you to actually do the ride is to literally just get in its rotation and do its cycle. And if you're showing up to the bus stop or like the front of the queue, right as the bus is showing up or right as the rotation is ending, you won't have to wait for a whole rotation of everyone else being on it. What just happened is we missed the rotation like right as we were showing up. They had like just begun the ride and I think the cast member was just like oh we'll get you on the next one I'm like okay that's fine I was trying to do the math in my head I think rotations take like two minutes and 15 I seconds think that plus the rotation that's gonna take us to do that's four minutes and 30 seconds combined with like load on load off time so okay my math was totally off it's not that's not at all what it is rotations actually for Mater's Junkyard Jamboree only take about a minute and 30 seconds what I was basically saying is like okay I believed at the time that it took two minutes and 15 seconds for the ride to do its thing so I was combining that that with another rotation because it's the rotation that we're gonna have to do because we have to wait for the current rotation and then our rotation that we're on so that's four minutes and 30 seconds and then I was kind of adding on some extra time for like load on load off time so I was trying to mentally figure out how long is it gonna take us to get on this ride are we gonna be able to do rope drop effectively I came to the conclusion that rope drop is gonna be happening while we're on the ride and that's exactly what ended up happening isn't it entirely luck based for making it to rotation on time yes even ride. though so we crazy. miss never... even though we missed this rotation it was was still good. It didn't take away any time from our final time. And I'll explain why in a second. Seen any video I was still kind of freaking out though because I was like, entry. no way. I always forget how crazy this ride is. It's like actually, oh my God. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, there are people roping dropping right now. Like literally here. There's you can kind of see it for like a few seconds, but there's literally people right there who are rope dropping. People literally rope dropping right now. <laughs> And that was kind of an amazing spectacle to see as we're like swinging around on this ride. It was kind we of We actually did that. Three rides at DCA in 30 minutes. It's 8 o'clock on the 8.01. So we're getting off this ride. It's 8.01 a.m. I'm going to let myself explain what our strategy is for the regular rope drop. I figured the best course of action would be to ride every ride in a more sequential order to save time on walking distance. Which means after the 8 a.m. rope drop, we need to land wipe Cars Land by riding Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters and Radiator Springs Race before heading over to Pixar Pier to do the rides over there. This strategy is very much compensating for the strategy that I had at Disneyland because one of the biggest things that I criticized about my Disneyland speedrun, and I said this in the video that I posted where I was like explaining my whole entire strategy for Disneyland speedrun, the biggest criticism that I had was the fact that we were kind of jumping around the park trying to get to certain rides 
and not like staying in one area and just doing all the rides in that area. So this strategy is literally just me saying, okay, we're gonna stay in one area and we're just gonna get all the rides done and then move on to the next area. With that though, that means that we have to do both Radiator Springs Racers and Luigi's Rollickin Roadsters at Rope Drop. Only issue is that these two rides have a tendency to break down at the beginning of the day, so our chances of sticking with this route are entirely up to luck. I was staring at the wait times for Radiator Springs Racers and Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters, specifically at Rope Drop, for maybe a good month before doing this. I kid you not, two out of three of the times that I would open that app at 8 a.m. and look at the wait times, one of those rides, or both of those rides, would be broken down immediately at Rope Drop. So I was fully expecting that it's very possible that the one of these two rides is gonna break down, and that was a very big issue. And here's the thing, Radiator Springs Racers, if that ride breaks down, that's totally fine. It, it sucks, it's a a little annoying, but it's totally fine. I'm not really that concerned because we have a lightning lane for it. We have an individual lightning lane for it. So I'm not really that concerned about Radiator Springs Racers. It's Luigi's Rollickin Roadsters that I am terrified of. It was that freaking ride that I was so terrified of before this speed run. Because here's the thing, Luigi's Rollickin Roadsters, unless you get to it at rope drop, you're looking at like probably a 40 minute wait. And there's no way of getting around it. There's no lightning lane for it. And the reason for that is because the rotation times for that ride kind of suck. It can only cycle through a good 40 people every every five minutes roughly, which is pretty bad. I was very, very concerned about Luigi's. I was like, okay, if, if Radiator Springs Racers breaks down, fine, whatever, we'll just get to it later. But please, for the love of God, Luigi's Relic and Roadsters don't break down, please. We need to get to you during rope drop. I'm on the left side. Everyone else is on the right. Everyone else that you see here is going over to Radiator Springs Racers. But we're going on the left because we don't want to do that ride. We're going to Luigi's on the left. I was fully aware of the fact that if the ride broke down, we probably couldn't do this in less than five hours. And I was very strict in this video of like, we need to do this in less than five hours. This is Disneyland Speedrun Part 2. Please tell me Luigi's is open right now. It looks like it's open. This ride always But it was open. Down. We can't get on this. We would have to wait like 40 minutes at least for this ride. We might actually be able to do this in less than five hours guys i'm feeling really confident i was so Jeffrey, excited that we okay and as you can see right now we are the first rotation of luigi's relic and roadsters that's why i say that for these first four rides at least there's no possible way we could have done these any faster because we were the first rotation for guardians essentially just walked on spider-man we missed the rotation for maters but it doesn't matter because the ride we do immediately after we're the first rotation for there's no way that we could have done this any faster this is as fast as you can do it this is amazing you guys this is i'm so happy that this ride is open this is I I'm was sure so the most happy. happy anyone. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a lightning lane for Radiator Springs. We're the only crazy ones to pay $18 per person to do a light. Which is true. We are the only crazy ones to actually pay money to do a lightning lane this early in the morning because there wasn't a whole lot of lightning lane people. If we had had the wait through standby though, because like, look again, everyone here is going to the ride, like just standby. They're just going to the ride. We're skipping like most of those people. Even though we did have to go through Luigi's, we're still skipping like a big majority of these people. That was like a part of the plan is that I kind of knew is that like, it's better to just do Luigi's first so that we don't have to wait for that one at all. If we didn't do lightning lane, we probably would have had to wait a good 45 minutes for it. Yeah, I think it took us like 15 minutes to get through this. Didn't take that long. So, so that was pretty after awesome. after this is to hit Toy Story. And after Toy Story, we're just gonna knock stuff out at Pixar Pier. Fifth ride of the day, fifth ride of the day. Whoa! 8.18 that in the morning. So we're cool. not even an hour in and we're on the fifth ah. ride. And we're going on these big rides too. Like this is this like is the biggest ride actually. in the entire park. Uh, five rides down, 14 more to go. Can we do this in less than five hours? We'll see. We have to walk all the way to Toy Story. So it's gonna take a bit. Okay, so we are now going to Toy Story. We have to walk all the way to Pixar Pier. Toy Story specifically because we have a lightning lane for it. And we want to use up that lightning lane as soon as possible so that we can initiate the overly complicated lightning lane strategy that I'm about to explain to you in just a second. We're going like right on schedule. With what we were ahead is. of schedule. I didn't realize it at the time, but we were like ahead of schedule. Four hours, 15 minutes. But that's if everything goes right and something's gonna go wrong, like inevitably. 
I was fully expecting something to go wrong, but nothing went wrong during that rope drop. That rope drop was perfect. I was fully expecting one of these rides to break down. None of them broke down. This could have gone so much different if we had gone on just a different day. We're emphasizing a five hour time limit. We want to get this done before lunchtime. Which is why we're heading over to Toy Story so that we can use up our current lightning lane and be able to book another one. Okay, so I'm about to explain my lightning lane strategy, but it's it's not the full strategy. I'm just letting you guys know. I'll explain the full strategy right in a second. Now. Every ride in the Pixar Pier area is going to have a relatively low wait since it's still early morning. So that's why I booked a fast pass for Soren way over here, even though we won't be riding it for a little bit. So that's a very, very abridged version of the lightning lane strategy that I had. I couldn't fully explain what the actual strategy was because every time I tried to write it out for voiceover, it ended up being like a minute or two minutes long. And I was just like, okay, we need to keep the pace. So I was just like, screw it. I guess I just can't explain what the strategy is fully. But that's why we're here today because I'm going to explain what that strategy was. So basically what I'm doing is I'm booking a lightning lane. It's like 8.30 a.m. right now. I'm booking a lightning lane for Soren so that in two hours at 10 30 a.m i can book another lightning lane for monsters inc the data that i had looked at had said that if i booked a lightning lane at, for monsters inc at that time the return time would be pretty good and i wouldn't have to worry about the return time being too far out that i can't use it if i had waited to book until we got to soren the return times would have been far out in the future basically what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to do a lightning lane stacking strategy to get both the lightning lanes with the return times that i want them to be at which means that i have to modify my soren lightning lane a little bit because right now I booked it at 8.30 and it was like an instant return time, but we're not using it now. We're using it at 10.30. But if I just modify it, then I can get the return time to be the time that I want it to be. Thank God modifying your return time does not reset the two hour rule. That was the only reason why this whole strategy was even able to work. The TLDR of all that is basically I'm just using the two hour Genie Plus rule to my advantage to get good return times for the two rides that we want to do when we get to them. All it means is that I can't use Lightning Lane for the rest of the speed run. Run. But that wasn't really an issue, and I kind of knew that it wasn't going to be an issue, and we'll see when we get to those rides. <laughs> this editing was kind of awesome, I'm going to say. What? How did you beat me that much? <laughs> he beat me by like 50,000 more, he just said it. The Ferris wheel is two different rides. I don't care what So the interesting says, thing about the Ferris wheel is that it's two different rides. As per my Disneyland speedrun rules, you have to get through all of the attractions that move. This is listed as two different attractions on the Disneyland website. Honestly, if I wasn't doing this crazy lightning lane strategy, I probably would have gone for the Ferris wheel first. I knew that the Ferris wheel was going to be a pretty big issue. It has issues with rotations in the afternoon and even the late morning as well. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to do swinging first and then we're going to do not swinging bro what do you know so it's a, a walk-on no one's here there's no one in line <laughs> that was kind of awesome 8 51 really a.m and that's why i want to talk to you about my affiliation with getaway today okay i know you really <laughs> want to skip this ad read but i'm not even baiting you something insane happened in the middle of us filming this so please do not skip oh my god and that was okay, real bro. i'm not i wasn't even baiting you guys we're gonna see what happens during this ad read it's kind of crazy but hey perfect time to talk about this live stream is brought to you by getaway today just click the first link in the description if you book a vacation with two nights at a hotel and two days at a park and use the code TREV10, you can get a discount on top of what you're already saving by using Getaway Today. It's pretty awesome. But anyways, we're we're gonna keep going Whoa, through this. Do you need a motion sickness bag? No. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> to my defense, I 100% thought he was joking. Just link in the description. Right, give me the bag. Me the bag. Are you, wait, seriously? Oh. After this weekend, okay, I didn't show it in the video, but he actually did barf. I and I literally have video footage of him barfing, and I felt so bad in the moment. I was like, I'm probably not gonna put any of this in the video, but he was cool about it, so he was like, It's all right, well, you could put it in the video, but he was fine, he just had to get it out of the system. So, is this the line for non swinging? The line for non swinging goes through the exit of the line for uh, just the Ferris wheel in general. That's the line for the non swinging Ferris wheel, it's like right there. And I was asking this cast member, I was like, Is this the line like are th this is just it the line for non swinging okay can we just get in right here okay awesome so we just got in line we're already on the second part of the ferris wheel now it didn't take us that long to get through these it took us i think 13 minutes each to get through these which is pretty standard for if you have no weight for the ferris wheel at all but then this happened what this was the only part of the entire speed run where i actually was like oh crap like this is not good. <laughs> During the Disneyland speedrun, there was a lot of stuff that happened where I was like, wow, this is this is so bad. It was okay because- Please stay seated. Your journey will not 
now. Continue. Okay. Oh, okay. So all that stress for nothing. I think it was like 30 seconds. I don't even know why they announced it, but that's okay because I got to use it as clickbait at the beginning of the video. So honestly, I don't... I'm chill with them doing that. It was the, literally the only drama in the entire video. So but anyways, we're now going on Incredicoaster. Well. So you may notice we're waiting in standby for Incredicoaster. We could have done Lightning Lane, but we didn't. And the reason we didn't is because of the stacking strategy that I just explained earlier. But just keep that in mind. This is the one area where I think we could have saved time. I'll explain why when we get to Sorin and we actually get through the rest of this Lightning Lane stacking strategy. It's so oh, dude, we're so dead. <laughs> Yeah, this is me almost fading out. That was crazy. After Incredicoaster, we had just a few more rides to knock out at Pixar Pier, starting with Jesse's. So now the strategy is just do everything at Pixar Pier. We have Jesse's Creative Carousel, Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, and then we have stuff in uh, the Paradise Gardens area that we need to do. We just need to do these like as quickly as possible. And all of these rides are rotation rides. We're hoping that the rotation is just a one rotation wait, or we just walk on it. And for the case of Jesse's Critter Carousel, okay, this is perfect. The rotation just the rotation had just stopped look at him. so we got pretty lucky there we literally just walked on this ride let's see how long it took to do jesse's critter carousel two hours four minutes 20 seconds two hours 10 minutes and nine seconds so this is less than six minutes this is like five and a half minutes to get through jesse's critter carousel at any time of the day usually the wait time data for that ride is just five minute wait all across the board you don't usually see a wait time longer than five minutes for jesse's critter carousel 10th ride of the day 10th ride of the day we're doing so good dude we're only two hours and seven minutes and there's 20 rides in the entire park, so we're already halfway done with the entire park. So Jeffrey's not gonna go on these rides, that's okay. This one's not moving, so they're probably loaded people on. We, okay, we might have to wait. For so I was worried that like, we would have to wait for a rotation for this, rotation. and we did have to wait for a rotation. Oh, there's no one in line. But there's no one in line, and that's what I realized very, very quickly. When I was doing my planning, planning out how long it was going to take me to get through these rides, I kind of assumed that we might have to wait for like two rotations to actually get through some of these rides. But what I didn't realize is that there's no one actually in line for these rides this early, and on this day specifically, I chose a really, really good day. It didn't take long to get through Emotional Whirlwind, like, what, seven minutes? Less than seven minutes, six and a half minutes. And that's when I started realizing, oh my god, holy crap we can actually do this not in less than five hours but probably in less than four hours we can maybe even do this in like less than four hours i was a little cons i was like i don't know if it's entirely possible i was thinking we're maybe probably going to end around like four hours ten minutes i don't think we could do less than four hours and as we got on silly swings i decided to officially change our five hour time limit to a four hour time limit yep it's four hour time limit you guys so yeah, once again, didn't take that long to get through Silly Swings. We're looking at, we had to wait for a rotation of it. That's five minutes. It took like maybe five minutes, 20 seconds to get through that. We're blazing through these rides, especially these smaller rides. We're just, we're blazing through them. And then we're moving on to Goofy Sky School. This was probably the best luck that I've ever had with like just going on rides at Disneyland. I'm going on Goofy's. I'm expecting we're probably going to wait like 10 minutes for Goofy. All right. What's the wait times right now? But this we're going to see how long it actually took. So the standby was posted at 10 minutes. I was planning on doing single rider. I figured we'd still have to wait a bit for single rider for it. But then I walk in line. Oh yeah. Look at this. And. Oh. Yeah. Thank you literally so just walked on that was 20 second wait that's not fake at all that was real so what i've since learned about goofies and how yeah, look it works this is where they usually have people line up for single rider they have people like go to the end of this and you just line up right here and then when you're at the end right here that's where they pull from single rider people but i went up the stairs and there was like no one here so i was like a little confused because i was like wait do i go all the way down there like what do i do. So I was just kind of waiting around, like hoping that someone would notice me. And that's when the cast member noticed me. It was like, oh yeah, you could just walk on this one because they were just loading on a group of three yeah. right over here. And we literally just walked on. This was amazing. I was freaking out kind of in my mind because I was like, oh my God, no freaking way. We just got on this ride that I thought was going to take like 10, 15 minutes and we just got on it in 20 seconds. That's kind of amazing. That's kind of insane. I'm riding every ride in this park today. Uh, this is ride number 13, I think. 
Yeah. We My theory is that they had just gotten to the park and it was like their first ride of the day and that's why they were like so shocked at the fact that I'd done 13. I mean, it is also just kind of insane. The park's only been open for like two hours. Two hours, 24 minutes, 53 seconds. Two hours, 28 minutes, eight seconds. That's like less than four minutes. The only other ride that it's taken me less time to do than this was Mr. Toad's Wild Ride for the Disneyland speed run. But that's because it was early entry and there was literally no one in line. And of course it's early entry. I was kind of expecting there to be no wait at all for like any of these rides. It's 10 in the morning. <laughs> And we just walked on a ride. Like this was this was so amazing. I was so happy at this, this point. Is a goofy ride. Even oh, Jeffrey was it? shocked at the fact that I had just gotten on the ride. These turns are so bad. Oh, turns already on. <laughs> He was like, oh, Trevin's already on. Okay. He was just like, he was just filming for B-roll. And he was like, he just saw me up there. He was like, oh, Trevin's already on. Okay. <laughs> it was so funny. Right, the goofy skip you got, which uh, isn't uh, in the afternoon. You still probably have to wait for single rider. But if it's morning, any time in the morning, you could probably just walk on it. So just keep that in mind when you're doing speed runs. Single rider, I think in general is just a really good strategy to utilize because that's one lightning lane less that you have to book. Okay, we're doing jump and jelly So now I'm just running over to jump and jellyfish, which is like right next to it. Skip. So it wasn't entirely a walk on 10.05. It took us like a little bit to wait for it. Um, and that's because the rotations kind of suck for this one too. Less people really want to go on this ride, but because the rotations take a bit and I think they only had one side open also, because I think they usually have two sides open, but they only had one side open at this time. But that didn't even really matter because we had already made up our time with the fact that we had just skipped Goofy and the fact that we had like waited like nothing for the three rides before that. Ride 14, 10.05 a.m. We're doing great. We are jumping right now. We're currently jumping. We're getting on Little Mermaid now. We did stand by even though they had just recently opened up Lightning Lane for it. It's kind of stupid that they even added Lightning Lane in general, but that's that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> but we're not even doing Lightning Lane. We can just walk on it as it should, as it was intended to just be walked right. on. Anyways. <laughs> Was that 15 That's or was that 16? Right so we really only have four more rides. There's 20 rides in the park. We just got done with the 15th one. Because of the wind speed, Golden Zephyr is just not gonna open today. I was fully expecting Golden Zephyr to not be open for our speed run. Before doing the speed run, I was basically like staring down the wind speeds of Anaheim. And I realized that there's probably no chance of us actually getting on Golden Zephyr. I think when it gets over 10 miles per hour, they close down Golden Zephyr. I got this wind advisory notification on my phone. It goes into effect from 7 p.m. this evening to 7 p.m. Sunday. We did this on Sunday, so I got this like the night before. So that's when I realized, oh yeah, we're... <laughs> We're probably not going to do Golden Zephyr at all, which is totally fine. So that's why we're walking away from this area because I was fully expecting this ride to just be closed for the rest of the day. Grizzly River Run, Sword Over California, the Red Car. So we just have four more rides and, left. Uh, Monsters Inc. You may be wondering what day we did this since we've barely waited in line today. And the answer is, after hours of research, I concluded that the very end of the holiday season is the best time to go, January 7th. The reason that I concluded that January 7th was going to be the best day to go to Disneyland was not because it said that it was going to be the best day on any crowd calendar that I looked at, but because January 7th is the last day of the holiday season at Disneyland. The next day that we went, actually, they had already taken down quite a bit of the uh, holiday stuff. They weren't playing the, the Christmas music anymore. So that's a really big deal because it means that there's going to probably be less people going this day because everyone's already kind of done the holidays. That, you know, it's January now. People don't really care about the holidays anymore. Also, it's also January 7th, the Sunday before all of the schools in the area, like in the orange Orange County and LA County area, those people go back to school January 8th. Parents are probably not going to want to take their kids to Disneyland the day before they go back into school. My thought was like, okay, they already did their Disney vacation a couple weeks ago when it was actually the holidays. On top of that, Sundays are also really good days to go to Disneyland. The, the working theory, at least for why Sundays typically are really good days to go to Disneyland is because people usually start their, their Disney vacation on like a Friday and then they go for Saturday and then maybe they go a little bit on Sunday, but because it is their last day of their vacation, maybe they're like traveling away. That's the working theory as to why Sundays are pretty good for Disneyland instead of like what you would expect to be like the middle of the week. That's why I was like, dude, January 7th is the day. Like it ticks all the boxes. This has to be the perfect day to go to Disneyland. And it was, <laughs> it really was. It, it was 
it was perfect. But it wasn't just perfect because, like, it seemed like it was going to be perfect. It was perfect because none of the rides broke down that day. Everything just went according to plan. If, like, one of the Avengers Campus rides broke down earlier in the day, that would have messed us up pretty badly. If we were in Cars Land and, like, Luigi's Rollick and Roasters broke down, we wouldn't be seeing the less than four hour time that I got at the end of the speedrun. We would have been seeing something more like five hours, 30 minutes or something because it would have added about that much time. Also, it's worth noting that the ride we're about to go on, Grizzly River Run, that ride was gonna close for refurbishment for like a couple months the day after this, like January 8th. When we went back there the second day, actually, it was literally closed. Uh, we couldn't even go on it. It's literally a walk-on, bro. This is so crazy. And we I walked knew, on I it, too. that today was gonna be a not busy day. I just knew it when I booked today. I knew it was gonna 10, be a not busy day. 18, we walked on it because it's like 50 degrees outside. It, I know it looks sunny, but it's also like January 7th, so it's pretty cold. <laughs> That's oh, why we were, God. like, the only people okay, on this We're ride. gonna get wet. Like, I'm so... <laughs> Once we got to Sorin, we could finally use our lightning lane that we've been saving for a while. And as I found out, our luck with getting a lightning lane from Monsters, Inc. was very generous. Okay, so it's important noting that it's 1028 right now. Remember how I said we booked a lightning lane for Sorin right when we got on Toy Story? It was 830 when we got on that ride. So that means it was exactly two hours after we had booked the Sorin lightning lane that we were even using the Sorin lightning lane. What my strategy was, was that I was booking a Soren Lightning Lane so that I can book the Monsters, Inc. Lightning Lane after it had been two hours. But because we were getting on the ride right when it was at the two hour mark, it meant that it didn't really matter that I had even gone through the effort of doing this whole strategy of stacking the lightning lanes because we could have just used the lightning lane and then booked for Monsters, Inc. But I didn't think that it was going to I thought it was going to take us a little bit longer to even get to Sorin. That's why I even had that whole strategy in place in the first place. And that's why I say that if we had been using Lightning Lane, and we use Lightning Lane for Incredicoaster, then we would have saved like probably five minutes just getting on Incredicoaster. That's why I say it's, that's the only area where I think we could have saved a little bit of time. But I was playing it safe. I didn't know that it was going to take us not that much time to even get to this area of the park. The only other rides that like if we had used Lightning Lane on them, the only other rides that we could have done that for was Grizzly River Run, which we literally just walked on, so it didn't really matter. Little Mermaid, which again, we walked on, so it didn't really matter. And uh, Goofy Sky School, which if we had used Lightning Lane for Goofy Sky School, we probably would have waited longer for Goofy Sky School, just because it only took me like 20 seconds through Single Rider. At this point, we're, we're settled. We're good. We're gonna get through the rest of the rides like easy peasy. The only thing that could mess us up really badly is if for some reason the Monsters, Inc. return times are like way out in the future. Like if I look at my phone and I see that the Monsters, Inc. return time is out for like 1 p.m. or something, that would really screw us over because then we just have to book for that return time and we can't use it until 1, which means we probably would have just went in standby. This was the one area where with all the good luck we got, if they want to give us some bad luck, this is the one area where they could give us a little bit of bad luck. It was 10.30 a.m. at this point, so I was like, let's check, like, now that I just used the lightning lane, let's book for Monsters, Inc., let's see what the return times are, let's see what it's like. What time is it, 10.30? And this is 10.30, oh. It's too easy. It's just too easy. I was expecting the return time to be like 11 something. It's 1030 right now. The return times were- We had an instantaneous return time. So that's why I was like, dude, this is so crazy. Just how lucky we got. Like, so that's why I was like, bro, we, we got this in the back now. Like it doesn't even freaking matter. This is when I knew like, we're definitely going to do this in less than four hours. Like this is just, we have it in the bag now. There's nothing in our way. We just have to get through these rides and we're good. For 1035. Like it's just too that's easy. Why I was like, it's just too easy. Like they're making it too easy for us. Come on. <laughs> and then- Dude, you gotta appreciate this editing, come on. If we really start pushing right now. Important to note, it's 10.52 now. It took us a little bit to get through Soren. If we can do this before 11.30, then we will have done this in less than four hours. And that's what I was pushing for. We have two more rides at this point. This is where I was like, maybe a little bit concerned. I was like, maybe it won't take less than four hours because Soren took a little bit longer. I was fully expecting Soren to take a little bit just because of its rotation. It's a single rotation ride. We've got 38 minutes. We just need the red car trolley and Monsters, Inc. So yeah, we have two so we rides have to track left. down wherever the trolley is and just hop on it. So for the red car trolley, in order to consider the ride complete, you have to start at either the DCA entrance stop or the Hyperion theater stop. 
stop and travel the complete trolley line one way. It would be super helpful for us to begin the ride at the DCA entrance so that when we get off at the Hyperion Theater, we are in the perfect position to make a mad dash for our final ride, Monsters Inc. However, this is all dependent on where the single operational trolley is in its rotation, so we need to track it down. Where is this freaking trolley? It's not there. I don't see this it. This was so intense. We can either Just get looking on for the it trolley. way over here or it's coming oh, it's right back. There, right there. But then we saw it and I was really happy because I was like, okay, awesome. It's going in the right direction. It's going in the direction of showing up at the front of DCA, which means that we can literally just get on it at the DCA entrance and then go to the Hyperion Theater stop where like that's right next to Monsters Inc. We'll get on Monsters Inc. and we're good. So I was really happy about that. We got oh, okay. very lucky with the okay, trolley. Never mind. It's okay. So, so 25 minute wait with light. So this is me trying to figure out how long it's going to take to do Monsters Inc. With the current wait time that it's at, it's a 25 minute wait. And I was trying to figure out, okay, how long does that mean in like lightning lane? How long will we have to wait lightning for lane. it? Look at that. Maybe at worst 15 I was like, at worst wait. 15 minutes. And then this trolley should take like 10 minutes. And I was like, the trolley's going to take 10 minutes. So that means 1125 is when we end the speed run. Uh, and that actually was, that was pretty close. That was a pretty good estimation. That's why I was realizing, holy crap, we might barely, barely make this before 1130. We so, might yeah. barely make it. Do you think we can do this in less than four hours? Maybe. We're gonna be pushing it. It was pretty intense. I was, we'll at see. this point, kind of, it was kind of up in the air. I was like, we could do this in less than four hours, but also, we might not do it. It's also important noting that the cast members had to swap shifts in between this, which added on some extra time, uh, which is totally fine. I'm not complaining about that, but that that's just at least worth noting. That's why it took a little bit to get through this one. Super intense. That graphic took so long to edit, but it's so beautiful. I'm so proud of it. We have 20 minutes. Okay, it's 11.10. We have 20 minutes to just get on this ride and get off of it, which I was like, I think we should be fine, but I guess it just depends on how many people are in the lightning lane queue. Because if there's too many people in the lightning lane queue, that might make us have to wait a little bit longer. But thankfully, it might be that possible. wasn't an issue. It might just be possible to go <laughs> Because look, there's the no one in the lightning lane queue. There's no line for this. This is the merge point right here. This is standby people right here. We're lightning lane right here this is where we merge the lightning link queue has to merge with the standby queue so that it's just one continuous queue and it, it goes inside of the building where you get on the ride we got this we're gonna do this easy dub easy dub we did it this is where i figured out that <laughs> we were gonna do it because i think it's like a five minute wait it's 11 12 a.m and as it's i said like a five minute wait here and it's like a six minute ride it's a five minute wait and it's a six minute ride because i knew that like when you merge it's about a five minute wait to get to the vehicles and then on the ride it's like a six minute ride so i kind of knew that we were going to do this in less than four hours at that point, just because I had those times memorized because I'm a psychopath. <laughs> but if there's one thing you can't do at Disneyland that you can at DCA, it's experience the entire park before lunchtime. Okay, dude, this is it. True. Golden Zephyr is still closed. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, we, we had to check to make sure that Golden Zephyr was still closed because if Golden Zephyr was still open, then we would have had to just run over and do it because it's open. But it was still closed and I was kind of expecting that. So that meant that we just had this to is it. Once get off we this exit this. Three hours, 51 minutes, and 25 seconds. Genuinely, I don't think that I could recreate this speedrun even if I tried. This is perfect. Even if we did, like, go on a day where I knew, like, it's probably gonna be pretty good this day, we got so lucky, and that's why it was so good, because none of the rides broke down. If any of these rides broke down, it would have caused some commotion that would have equated to more time that we would have had to wait for other rides. Good luck to anyone who wants to try and beat the speed run. I don't think you can. You have to get very lucky. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who watched this. Go check out this full video, because it's a really freaking cool video. I put a lot of effort into making this one. See you guys.